Okay, a few of you uh, have written me, and you're not sure about the Titan, how my bottle worked. So, I got the welder out. As you can see here, welder, gas, everything else, and that little bit of framing took some welding. I also put a little fairing on it. I'm not sure if that fairing's there or not, it's just to help you realize that it's got a fairing going to the back with the electronics. This is the front viewing hole, don't be confused by that, that's where I need to put air to, into. And it's going that direction. So let's remove this for a second. And once we remove it, we see that it's got four legs. I think it has two supports to support the rings. Alright, so there will be the rings. And this I haven't been able to affirm that there's actually a brace down there. This I put on loosely. It's just bent. It's under friction. This will be sitting riding on top of these two uh, pieces of steel. So this is the Titan. Now let's see if I can explain this to you. All right, this is about overpressure. I want you first to help you understand this. The pressure down there is about 6,500, 7,000 PSI. That's reportedly. So whatever your shape is per square inch, surface, surface square inch, is 7,000 PSI. Now I just want you to imagine that this just cap just comes off. All right, and everybody says, oh, it just crushes it at that point. Well, it's it still got some resistance here, and it's 7,000 PSI. Some of it wants to go inside of it, and so it reduces when it goes in so fast, it equalizes both sides so quick. All right, equalizes real quick. So imagine if I grabbed a bucket and scooped it into a, uh, some water, a big, a big tub of water. You see, it works, doesn't it? I can get right in there. So the bigger the failure, the, the more fast it is. In this case, I have a problem because the separation of the back part with the leg mounts. It's mounted on the legs on the ring. So these are the, this will be a ring wherever you see the legs, all right? It's mounted on there. Um, again, I'm not sure if this is even mounted. This fairing is mounted at the bottom for the image I saw. But they, well, this is what they're mounted here, and I'll show you that in the image in a moment. But I want to talk to you about overpressure. So imagine if you could just do what I'm going to show you. Where, I, Okay. Well, let's go with this image while we're here. So there's that bar that's attached to the... I'm sorry, wrong direction. Back here. This bar is attached to the sub. The sub. And this is the back head of it. It's behind here. Well, let's talk about the attachment. So it's attached by these legs right here. All right, this is where... When the, over, when the pressure comes in, this is all it needs is the feet. These are the legs we see come up. As you can see clearly in this image, how they're formed. Very small. This is a 25,000 pound rated fitting. And you can see that it's not much. All right. So my air blowing from the back end of my system, defeating this doesn't take much at all. There, there's not much there. What it will take is loading. The outside pressure over here is also 6,500 PSI. So even if I start trying to blow, I'm blowing against 6,500 PSI over here. So it doesn't want to blow out that way. It might want to crush it. It's just running against the 6,500, whatever what we call overpressure is. But this becomes a cylinder. As the air is charged in here, it becomes a cylinder away from my forces this way from when I use the water, the uh, air, air gun in this. So that would be a water pressure coming in this way. Reason why this is so critical to me to come that way, because if I come this way, I don't get to save this. It crushes, explodes, this doesn't come away for free, this bracket. The slipping of the bracket, this is critical to me. Let's, let's look at it again. So to get or cord, or, uh, coordinated, this is the snorkel coming from the top. This is just that band going across the top, and you can see I put that fairing on there, that white part. Here's the motor parts, and these connections are here at the vessel. So that would be this part here that I'm showing. And there's another strap that comes across and touches here. I'm not sure if I'll do that strap by uh, doing it, give you a strap there. I've already got this strap under for you. This one that goes under and comes out the other side. I could come over and go there, and then I'd have to put the orange bottles in there to say, to show you how they didn't go through, that they're probably more than likely part of the uh, investigation already. 
So here, here you see the sub, we'll say. There's a bar at the bottom, and those are those legs, all right? And there's a crossbar, and then more legs. So it's just this one and these legs here. Removing it, the legs that hold it here, 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 here. And I think there's something holding up near the front door area, and maybe, I think I actually saw it more missing, of anything. That it was not landing, uh, resting there, but so it'll be resting more in the rings in that case, attached around here. There's a the ring that it mounts to here. I'm going to basically do start from the point of the rings already failed, uh, failed because I can't have it anchored here and it gets too dangerous for me to do my model. So looking at Titan and, and pretending it's got 7,500 psi around 6,500. Let's go with 6,500 psi to and but you can even say they were going back up that's okay i don't i don't mind you just change the location of this psi all right so um the 65 psi all around this area all right all around the vessel including on the plastic and if the plastic is here it's on this side of the plastic and that side so that plastic has to be able to take the pressure of 6500 psi too it can't compress it can't be a sponge if you will everything on here matters Okay, so now the 6,500 pounds are everywhere. If this implodes, remember, it still has, it can't just go anywhere. There's still 6,500 pounds of force it's got to get rid of. So how do you get this implosion, explosion going on? It's the volume that's inside there that's being replaced with the water around it and how fast it can shut it down and come back to, to that void being, being uh, replaced with the atmospheric uh, pressure of 6500 this is the same thing on how it's called overpressure how a bomb works here is 14 let's say 14.3 your atmosphere atmospheric pressure around you right now around you stick man all right stick man lean over all right all right and here's a bomb over here and this bomb is within 10 feet of you this bomb is capable of putting out out to 12 feet once it ignites able to put out 20 pounds of psi 20 pounds yep 20 pounds of psi at 12 feet so it explodes and it creates a shock wave and you guys know about shock waves right but it goes to you and it's now hits you and it's still you're in, you're at 10 feet it still can put out i said at 12 feet it can do 20 pounds so right where you are, it might be putting out 21 pounds of, of, of force at 10 foot away. If you are at 14.3, I did that again, 14.3, and this puts out 21.3. We're going to round up. 21.3 pounds of force by the time it impacts you. You're at 7 PSI. That's nothing, right? It's only 7 pounds. 7 PSI. It's duration and so it's, its duration really counts how long it lasts the, the pressure and it's the load so seven psi seven pounds per square inch i don't know how big your chest is but let's just say it's uh, uh 100 square inches so 100 square inches times 700 pounds per one square foot of surface area you're going to get 700 pounds so that would be like someone throwing a 700 pound weight into your chest poof, out of nowhere you think you could take it that's just your chest it's your legs it's your balls if you're a guy it's your eyeballs if you're facing it it's your eardrums it's your lungs if your mouth is open the pressure going into your and over overpowering your normal state of breathing in 14.3 blasting into your lungs okay all of this kills you all right it's it stops you and that's only seven psi over pressure when this opens up this becomes a hydraulic cylinder Hydraulic. It's literally fluid. All right. So I want you to, to see this as a tube, and literally the length of it, whatever this, and, and it's got a curvature at the front. So you add that, and, and at the back, I don't. I, I'm saying it's failing. It's failing at the back. So the pressure that comes in compresses the air up here because air is compressible. Fluid's not, and I'm a considered a person fluid. So if you wanted to throw them in, throw them under fluid. When this comes in, it's hell, it, 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 I, it might be a slow leak initially that turns into a catastrophic, catastrophic fracture that blows it open. 
Now, could it be right about here? Sure, I can test that. Uh, I put it at the seams right there, or at the seam right here, and not have it here. I can pick here, though, because there's a fitting that goes through the shell that brings the utilities in. So I can pick the rear end, and with that, I'm going to pick the rear end. You can change this, but be careful. The more you move to the front, the more the forces are going to go back. All right. Bringing your attention to a Claymore mine. A Claymore mine is a directional anti-personnel mine. It's like that. Face enemy to face face towards enemy. All right, and the forces can explode and go one direction, and you're back here, and you can be okay. Okay, another one is a mortar, but this is like a Claymore mine. You can get directional forces where it only goes one direction. This is how they shear steel with uh, when you're shearing shearing steel for a demolition, etc. It's not just blowing it, blasting out every direction. In this case. We have a pressure vessel that is reported, as everyone knows, great intention. So I want you to know that when water penetrates this and pressure penetrates this vessel, it's round now, it can take five inches, it can take that outward tension. Here's, let me change the color here. Here's the internal ring, and the external ring is the external ring is the other one, and it's going to be pressure. The water comes in. And what, lo and behold, it's never been cycled this way where water has been pressured from the inside out. It's not been cycled like that. So it's, it's a new direction for the carbon fiber and it can take most of it. Enough so that it can blow the door off and not just the ring with it because the ring is bolted, right? The ring's bolted up here. About 17 to 18 bolts. We understand that 18 is what it's supposed to have and the guy goes with 17 sometimes. No harm, no foul. Which what is, would be nice to know is what kind of bolts were they? Were they rated bolts or were they just regular bolts? It, it, this will tell us the pressure that before they before the the dome blew off the dome with the with the uh, viewing station, if you will. Somebody asked me to ask me to tell them where they were. Well, it was a panic mode, probably. They probably were all turning to look at him to see what was going on. Uh, if it's true about. Um, them saying that they're trying to resurface that they were going down too fast. Interesting, I have a video where I talk about could they be going down too fast and stressing the carbon fiber. That video is coming up in one or two cycles away with the, it's already scheduled, so it's four days away or whatever. But one of those videos I talk about, hey, could he have been hot riding it, is what I theorized, to get to the bottom so he can have more bottom time. Having more bottom time, he impresses the billionaires and he gets more money. Well, contrary to that, the person that I looked at the video stated that, uh, the, the inside scoop person supposedly from the video posted, is that he said that they were, they were dropping weights and they were coming back up. He thinks it was because they were going down too fast. I think they were coming back up because a, a failure was, was happening. So this debunks everybody who says that they never knew what happened, they cognitively this or that. Um, during the implosion they didn't but they had some moments of terror if you will maybe or they were all just calm as can be um, all right so now I get the joke also with the Rubik's Cube the boy wanted to take the Rubik's Cube down I also understand no he was not forced to go he talked his mother out is what I understand to let her go to be with Father's Day so the two of them could bond together too soon too soon on that one all right anyway so the uh, so the pressure comes in. This is a cylinder. This becomes a hydraulic cylinder. Fluids in there pressing outwards. It's carbon fiber and including the outer shell of uh, uh, flex seal. Yeah, I, I know you guys know what I meant. Um, it's not flex seal, so I don't want to get a marketing problem there. Including the outer layer of, uh, of rhino liner, as he states. Um, held this together and directed the forces to the end of the vessel down here as a hydraulic force as a, a pressure the air compresses the persons are back there and it they all meet in the back maybe so the uh, um, that was where that is so now the this blows off and how do I know it blows off and not with the ring also because they're not together unless they were together and they unbolted them that doesn't make sense does it but let's say they're in the other ring also so no, I have it that that blows off, and doing so the head first, it destroys the bolts, 
at the same time there's only a little bit of ring around the uh, left now ring the edge but it's continuously around the hole so there's a little bit of a lip there but it's enough for this hydraulic force to get behind it and pull the ring off that or during the um, the uh, ejection and the forces being equalized we've returned to pressure from the ocean around it being over pressured for a moment being charged like that with all that water in there that it then crushed the carbon fiber, the, re the, the, re the recycle back to it. Doing so, it creates a back pressure, a, a back pressure, the back pressure, pressure wave, blows the rear door off, and also the ring. Yeah, so you get that, you get the first, you get this one, and then that one. I don't have it, you know, could you get, let's do this, could you move it around? Sure, I can move it to a little degree, so here's a dome, here's a ring. The ring, in, but I need enough pressure to stay in this chamber. This chamber, the pressurized enough where it can break off both domes and rings. Unless you can explain another way the rings are off. So I'm just using pressure. I pressure this way to clear to clear me from the rear of the vessel. And it looks like gold. Looks like you can resell it back on eBay, that whole back here. All right, so I get a pressure here and then a pressure wave back that takes off the back end with a in, in internal pressure coming possibly from i don't i could never find it how they made the connection a couple of people said they use epoxy um i don't think so as uh pug face if you do the link uh they can see what it looks like for a submarine version of it this theoretically since he was off the shelf should have been a connections for um uh, uh unmanned submersible that goes down that date that deep because there's no manned submersibles to go that deep. Well, that one did, right? And a couple of others, one-offs. But the unmanned submersibles, well, they, they're tethered. And they can't leak, can't have water. Uh, um, that compartment's tethered. So it's going to have a nice watertight seal. And the watertight seal is kind of weird. Um, you just screw it in. Just like you would just watertight, watertight anything else. And then the connections are out here. You saw the red connectors. I'll show them to you again. They go here, and electrical connections are made here. And inside, there's the other version of it. it plugs everything, plugs in like a jack. But we have the oxygen connection. That's that's, that's really crazy. I believe the oxygen is, in, is outside. I don't know if all their oxygen is inside the vessel. That would be nice. Uh, that's also something that you could look at for implosion. Uh, but that would be pretty tough also to implode that because that's full of pressure itself. It's a pressure vessel inside a pressure vessel, but the PSI in here may be greater than the PSI I've created to destroy this pressure vessel. So you, the tanks may just be in place. You know, it's, the overpressure is what matters. It comes in at, um, I don't know what it takes, to, his testing, what he did with this, but it comes in and only needs overpressure of 100 PSI to destroy this whole thing. I don't know. And that's a lot. Remember, 100 PSI is per square inch. You do the math on what that looks like inside that inner ring per square inch and you'll see you'll be into the tens of thousands in, in just a hot second of the pressure outwards now that pressure outwards is being met again by pressure from the outside still there 6500 still there and that's why i can get my rocket going my blasting that i show you because the pressure outside, once the water gets inside, is still being countered by this pressure that didn't go anywhere. It's still 6,500. And inside, when it loads inside here, it's trapped in this tension band, this uh, carbon fiber tension band with the uh, Rhino liner. So it's not really being making an exterior pressure. It's more like a torpedo. So you can do your own research on torpedoes, but here's somebody's comment in 2019. A submarine uses air-activated pressurized water to expel torpedo out of the tube. Pressurized water is what we're talking about, a hydraulic force, guys. So you can go down this line if you want to start looking at them to try to understand it better. You can research that. I'm going to use air. So, pellet guns. Pellet guns uses air. And the direction of the air can only go one way because it's, it's sealed off after the air is uh, shot into the chamber. The pellets in front, the air still project, pushes that pellet outwards. That's the same thing except for now we're using water underneath here when the leak happens. It says, oh, we got access. It becomes air 
well it becomes hydraulic it becomes water pressure and you know what the psi is it's trying that it gets to push into that chamber into the chamber remember the chamber it does not have 6500 psi in it it's got maybe 14 15 psi so 6500 pounds psi comes blasting into that chamber maybe it starts flooding it but at some point it finish it cracks the rest of it and it's supercharged it's a big um, um, uh, hydraulic cylinder, uh, uh, cylinder driving to the front initially it might be a small one and as if a crack happens and it catastrophic crack then if it, it's the entire um, uh, pressure coming in 6500 also can be just you know a real it's so sudden the, the, the speed of it is the suddenness of it if I could bleed off the air from a pellet gun it can't shoot anything if I could bleed off the air from the submarine it couldn't do anything just you know letting the air out of the tires this wasn't bled off this was continuous behind it and who charged the head off that's why we would know to know like the bolts what could the bolts take on the head and we can to start determining what it takes to make 17 bolts fail with that dimension what pressure it can do and you can actually test that you can look for it to see if it's punctured punched through the uh the holes of the rings it's around there or if it or if the if the, if the uh it probably did just just tore the heads right off i don't i, I remember i showed you the screws they look they look uh, like a, like a manufactured screw that i made in a shop and put a nut on the back end i don't see that stopping much at all it's only the nut side that that would be uh would be the the back side of it where the nut is and on this side is that screw side this is the only part that's stopping it 17 space spaced out around the ring 17 or 18 it blows right through that i do not want to say that the eye that the viewing station came out anymore until i i want to, i want to wait for that because i don't see that small station viewing station even with the low rated bolts on it it also had a ring around it to just to distribute the bolts it had a lot of bolts and not one save it didn't ring bend over or anything if the lens cracked would we not still see the rings we don't see any bent bolts it looks like a smooth surface my guess is they removed that either to hook it up when it was down in the ocean or when it got topside after hooking up somehow that i don't know how they hooked that thing up to bring up that that thing but otherwise or in the ocean they uh, they took down a ratchet and this machine could unratchet it I, I don't know they're their drone they're uh their underwater man drone so unmanned so or did it get it the top side and they said oh well that looks like some uh red stuff so let's go ahead and take that off and take that red stuff somewhere else we don't want to, we want to keep it we just don't want to rinse it off we want to be able to identify so here is the front cover and the bolt holes are there and they're, they're, they're very small bolts like i said they're nothing special small holes in fact the outside pressure was going to keep it closed and over here though we have an entire ring and con uh, vex not concave um a viewing station that also it might be flat on this side i don't know for distortion i don't know how that make how that works it looks like it's curved inside if so that just makes it more focused the uh the load path but it, i just find it amazing it would be able to pop these screws with that said again i don't know how this guy manufactured this you know the screws low tech or not there's a video of him someone you know you guys sent me it shows that he went to buy some stainless steel and after he was for this and then he man and then he found out that oh not all stainless steel is the same and the stainless steel he purchased was rusting so he apparently he doesn't know how important metallurgy is with his design so when we look at the recovered recovered items you want to see if this hinge is there did it blow that off also that's just that would be critical to know it would tell you how the legs remember it fails at each leg each leg this is gone this is connection this weldment and the connection very weak connection here though i showed you in the, in the, in the beginning of the video so here's the back of the vessel here All right like that and it secures on the ring here okay so here's my securement here as you see 
all right but of course I it shears off so I have it that I don't need that force yet to shear it off and it's not much anyway it's hell this is dimensionally stronger than the way they had it so I want you to take note of how that's shaped that matters how you see the square it's like this and then the add it looks appears like a box tube on it but the back side of this is notched out like that so the box tube looks like that and then the anchoring part to this this section here drops down in there and anchors welds it's a very weak looking connection so in other words you can get this blasting off pretty easily so here's for your viewing pleasure a better one there's that connection this is the critical one this is right there with the three bolts one two three I'll show you in a second and then this is all this all made it okay there's your dome your dome's right back here with all this pressure all this uh all these devices that could blow up it did not I said it was very weak in the way they connected it if you see this is the manufactured part right down into there with the three bolts or screws rather one two three three screws one two three look down below that right there I mean below and it's in that tube and as I zoom in here again you see that it's open in the back it's you know they it's literally open in the back they're those connectors I talked about how they connect how they just jack together all right and when this came apart it jacked off no I couldn't resist it bad timing too soon all right it, it helps you remember it okay so this is where I said I don't see how this cage down here is very hard to see if it's how it's connected but you can see the upright connected there very easy for me to get get that tube going away remember I need this to slide away only have three bolts I need to slide away on each side okay let's get to it I'll show you that video now I had to come back to here to get a better shot for you again so you can take a look at that it's nothing at all you see it it did shear off there all right, whatever it's bolting into, one, two, three, coming from here, whatever, how would they merge it? It sheared off. It's in the video. You can zoom in. I did the video, and that's two hours long. I played Columbo in there. I gave you the hint, though. I said it would be a such force. It would be that. And I said, I shit you not. I kid you guys not. It would be like a samurai just swacking somebody's head off. That's it. That's one of my Columbo moves. That's the way I'm giving it to you. That The speed is so great that it shears it off, the three balls. And then I go into my Colombo move more further Colombo move but it's sheared off and I normally wait longer and give a lot more data to work you up here talking about shear and talking about the carbon fiber giving you all the background before I jump right into the model now I'm doing reverse pug face asked me to do a model also so here's your model ahead of time so we'll do this one this this is a uh, news right here we go one of my sources has reported that here we go. Um, about the time that they lost comms, or just before they lost comms, which is about 45 minutes down, they reported they were trying to release ballast. Mm. Um, what that means to me is they were heavy. They sure. were Sorry. they were descending faster than they were supposed to. So they were trying to get rid of weight. That's ballast. They were trying to get descending faster than they were supposed to. So they were trying to get rid of weight. Ascending, coming up, guys. That's ballast. They were trying to get rid of, of weight. Um, what? So you got to realize that means you heard cracking, which made it come in, or there was water coming in. And, uh, oh, yeah, a lot of you think water can't come into a sub. It would just automatically fail. That's your belief. That's just, uh, you're wrong. All right, let's go research it. Believe that. I can't stop you from believing that. Oh, don't forget earth is flat could have caused that um, again maybe there was a computer glitch and their thrusters got stuck in down and they were driving themselves down faster than they needed to and couldn't fix that okay let's go with that let's go with that remember I said people want to tell you the truth right I, that just might be the truth they might know that and he threw it in as a maybe like a Columbo move um, or they suffered 
um, an incursion into the hull. So we had water coming in that may have shorted out the electric. Shorted out a leak, you just said. We have short. Son of a bitch, I just saw something. Is that a penetration through the hull right there? Pug face. I think we just found a penetration. You're good with actually cracking down the last, oh, another one. And that looks like air pressure line. So we got a regular standard air pressure line. And if that's the, the pressure hull, the back of it, the, then now we have our block, a, a, a block to look into also. Is it rated? All this stuff should be rated. And, or at least tested, right? And to a failure, and then you know the rating on it. So, is that rated? But that's one of the blocks that would penetrate, it looks like, the hull. And then remember, you have the other connections? They connect here. So it would be here, male-female type thing. And connect. Since we don't see a wire line coming out of here, I'm assuming it's not connected yet. So then, right in front of me is the, uh, what, I, what I wanted to grab. Looking for forever. One of them. The more they do, the worse it gets. As far as making a hull, you're dividing it up, you're perforating the hull. Not, not good. And that's titanium even. So we come here now. Oh, I turned the volume down, sorry. We come here now, and we look at the offloading of, the, of this. We're not going to do it much. We're just going to do a peek at it. There's the ring. Maybe this is the door hinge side. I think it is. Um... Because I don't remember seeing something like that on the other side. And I don't see in the ring, I don't see the bolts, any bolt patterns. That I don't even see them. The guys, it could be just, just uh, the photography just dulled everything down. All right, so there's the ring. That's just water. It was raining. All right, there's the ring coming up. You can locate that ring if you want to do it. There's the bolt to the far left. It's of interest to me that I've never been able to find yet. That would tell me which ring exactly it is and confirm it. All right, they're covering it over. I'm going to stop it when they bring up. There's the same ring or another ring. Looks in great shape. Some of you said, oh, it looks deflected. Okay, whatever you see. You know, you can guess it, but you can't, you can't tell me it's deflected. Uh, maybe there's carbon fiber hanging from the inside and metal on the outside there. That is, I don't know if that's a skid or not. It looks very thin. Somebody tried to say it was a skid. I don't think so. All right, here's what my big issue is. It's coming right there. This. This is that part where I show you... where I show you the... Uh, how important this is because of the... Uh, hold on. Because of... We're going to pull it up. It's kind of a different gallery here. Here we go. Because this, this is where the balls were. One, two, and three on the left side. Of the, if you think the port is left. Port side, left side. That's where the balls were. It's not deformed. It's not bent out. It's still in the proper shape. We see our batteries in great shape. Everything else. So this is why I do the torpedo action going that direction. That they shear it off. Now, talking to another engineer friend of mine, he said, that, hey, maybe they had a cheap ball saw also. All right, so he's saying the same thing. Maybe the guy you didn't check the bolts. Maybe he didn't pull them out and inspect them because doing so, you'd have to support this whole structure back there while you pulled them out and inspected them. So you, it was perfectly okay until you get this catastrophic event where it shoots it off. Or it still could be that I get this, the bolts shearing by the back ass weight of this falling off still. So that's not for free that I state that. It could still happen. I would sort of know that. If I can look in the bottom part of this skid, and it had a connection, and it was bent like that. Because if this rotated out, if there's, if there's, a, if there's a top one here, and there's a bottom one here, and the rotation is this way, I'm going to get some issues here. Because this one can't rotate out also, it's going to have a buckling somewhere here. If this one down here is as smooth as this one, and the other one is also smooth on the opposing side, and the bottom one's smooth, it's going that way like a skid, like I'm going to show you in the model, like I'm going to demo you again. All right, so there's that piece there. So keep track of that, how smooth it is, not bent. And another video, I'll bring it to your attention. This has been pounded, dented, and you can probably ask me if you really need to find it. Maybe someone will uh, ask, the, ask, the, ask the general public, and maybe someone will be able to tag you in the video that, that I show that. 
here's the opposing side that we can look at. There it is. It slides into this section. You get one, two, three bolts. Okay. Let's zoom in on it. That's what so smoothly released itself. As you can see, the back area here has just a ring and bolts holding it. This has a weld connects to the skid that does that. Again, the bottom part down here, I have not been able to affirm that it actually has that uh, connection. It appears that the uh, drop weights are on two sides. Um, okay, so let's look at the model again that I made and go from there. So we'll put this model in the water, but this is the model with the fairing. All right, and I just put this on here loosely. So now you can see how everything lines up. There are the legs, there's the skid. The skid's wrong, incidentally. It should have one little leg going down. I should put braces in and all this stuff. But this is all I care about, this theoretical failure. Now, can I put a new cap on here, put another hole here, and charge it? Can I move the, the location of this, charging it here? Maybe I'll do that for you in, the, in, a video, in this video. Maybe I'll charge, we'll shoot one off here. See how this makes out with that with that accident, and then I'll go to the ring and make a, the ring um, have a leak. So I'll come up here and put a hole in it. Maybe most of the pressure will come back out. Maybe I won't get what I need. But we have this. The arms slide right off. All right, let's go for it. Let me move this over to the tank. So here's the cutest thing. There's one of my strays, guys. That I asked for thumbs up for. Now she didn't know I just put some meds in her, uh, her, uh, her, um, uh, whatever you call it. But anyway, our, our project is right here. I have multiple things I was doing there, but I don't want to. I don't want to mess with her, and I don't want to mess my video up. But that's who I call Nancy. She's a mommy already, and that's her. She's taking her meds. She's a stray. Oh, remember I said the murder of crows? You hear them in the background? They also scream for food. So Nancy doesn't have a partner here. She's just like that. So that's her food. She's got a little shot of tuna in there. And yeah, eat it. So she has a shot of tuna in there. And a shot of zap. You see what it is? The name of it? Alright, so this works great for fleas so i'm making sure she has a comfortable life with her other two little kittens that you saw that's her two little kittens I, she's the one that carried them away when i uh, put them down in a nice little area um another story for that but let's get back to this video oh well, i guess i gotta wait for nancy anyway so i could pause it or talk to you about nancy so i i uh i was going to move my trailer and i heard this screaming and i was like what the hell is that and so i grabbed the, the tarp, looked underneath the tarp a little bit, and there were two little kittens. Oh, the cutest things, but I instantly thought, oh shit, I killed some other cats. So I quickly, see what I just threw off the trailer, looked over there, nothing, it was zero. And Nancy, um, and so then I put them, I, I, I snatched them up, because they went around. I put them in a nice little comfortable box, and uh, she did that video for you guys. And now um, Nancy, uh, came back she watched me with the kitten she wouldn't come and get them from me so she trusted me with that that way and then i put them in a box over by the wall waited and she came and got one and then a whole hour went by and she wasn't coming back so i ran to the store to grab the last bit of uh, kitten food that special food they had and um no sooner i got back the person was watching over them watching over the little kitten for me nancy came back this one came back and i already grabbed her i just missed her they said so, um, she's taking care of her young, her two kittens. This is probably week six now, five, six coming up. So they should be showing their faces soon. At least one, I hope, you know, there were two of them. There were two of them, so we hope one shows up. All right, we should hope that. All right, let me go back. Let me do what, let Nancy eat, and then we'll get back to the last bit of this content, which would be the, uh, the run of that, I gotta put some safety gear in on anyway. This thing is pretty, uh, pretty powerful. That pressure built up in that container, right, Nancy? So I'm right here, so she lets me go close to her. Oh, for, for clarity, 
for clarity. She walks up to me. About, gets about like this close and sits down and looks at me, implying, hey dude, this mouth doesn't feed itself. This mouth doesn't feed itself. And sometimes if I give her just nuggets, she's like, yo dude, do you have any tuna? Because she'll like, yeah, she'll eat something and stand and look at me. I'm like, shoot, let me go crack it open. Let me get that tuna going. Okay, I'm gonna have to sacrifice that middle bar. I'm gonna cut that out. Because I think it'll be too dangerous. Okay, here we go. I'm going to turn it a little bit that way. I'm going to put the sub, the sub, on top of there and charge it. I have it at a distance, so hopefully you can, we can observe together. Let's see. Yeah, let's do it this way. Okay, I'm going to charge it. I'm going to see. It's probably going to ricochet over there, but maybe I'll get lucky. So here comes the charge. That's even better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So now you saw what an implosion looked like. Huh. So. No, it, it was water pressure. But uh, the bottle broke, broke instead of, hold on, let me tell this guys. So here we have, I mean, I couldn't get it asked for better, could I? The first one we saw, we saw this um, eject. This video, it didn't eject. It built up pressure and blew off, even blew off the, the legs. I mean, how amazing is that? It blew the legs off. So I can't ask for a better demonstration th than that, guys. I could, can anyone tell me why it, uh, and then look at that. Can anyone tell me why um, it blew up this time as opposed to the last time? Not because it was cycled, because I'm not that dumb, I used a different bottle. On purpose, I set that, this in there to wedge, I made a smaller hole and wedged it in there to get that tighter in. Ah. I wedged it in there to get the tighter, the tighter seal so I can create pressure. <laughs> I thought it actually would break that. I thought it would break that, go down there and, and, and crush it or do something like shatter that glass. I do have on, I do have on safety gear, so I thought I was covered on that. That was dramatic, wasn't it? That's the version. You saw one version early today. This is a great new version. Um, and there you saw the predictability of it. All right, plus we get our back end coming off it's still coming off what's that stone picked up okay so hmm what do you think